much cringe I'm on the fan base. <laughs> Should release Plot this reaction in a... Uh, Jeb, why are you being Mr. so Torres. sexist? <laughs> <laughs> Plot armor is sexism, to be fair. Um, it is. It's very sexist. Yes, like, it doesn't want to shoot the man. Man, that's pretty sexist. <laughs> I shoot all men and women equally. Just like this. Oh, yes. I have no, I have no bias. I, there is equality. I think if you're a, an evil person who kills people, no matter what gender you are, I think you deserve to be punished. Exactly, and that is true equality. <laughs> the best <laughs> equality. Um, but yeah, do you Regardless guys have to... if the doctor was a man or a woman, had had to do whatever, still punish them for sending the master to the Nazis because he's not white, <laughs> no matter what gender. That exactly. doctor is a cunt. <laughs> if it had been David Tennant, if it, uh, if it had been Peter Capaldi, it's doing that is a cunt move anyway. Oh, absolutely. I'm gonna in this episode. I'm generally gonna go on a round about fucking plot armor retardation. Oh please! Oh, I can't oh, wait. Oh, please, if there isn't, if there isn't, Marcus, screenshots of the tweet in this in this recording when you eventually <laughs> edit, I'm going to be so mad at you <laughs> because there's so much meme potential here. Uh, I'll so have you go through Jeb's um, profile and the yeah, shit, <laughs> the shit people you argue with, but don't worry, I'll so much. I'll end. Go in the genesis of Adrazani chat. I basically kept linking the Satardis tweets and my responses. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Oh, me and we mean Connor of streaming later, pretty much like two hours from now, and we're gonna fucking talk about it. <laughs> and that's gonna that's gonna be fun. That's gonna be real fun. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna have that on as I edit. Long. Yes, you are. Though, Jeb, that's not new to me. I've always known you're a sexist. Right, so, do you guys have the episode open? I do, unfortunately. <laughs> Marcus, uh, or, no, all of you, actually, you are not ready for the plot armor that you're going to witness. I'm not. I I'm mean, so I've, seen the Dan, I've seen the Dan plot armor, like, oh, I, I, I doubt it can get any right. worse than that. You know what's real funny? Like, I all I've talked about is the one bit of plumber, and that's like, oh, that's all you're arguing. It's like, oh, they're not ready for when they actually watch this. <laughs> yeah, we have. Yeah, yeah, but actually, watch the episode. Uh, this this would be a good episode to just get clips from this recording and post on Twitter and be like, yo, Mr. Yeah. Tardis, what oh, you think of our I can't wait for the next discourse. Oh my god, you 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 pulling out more plot armor? <laughs> oh my god. I was like, this episode is bad. Anyway, Eval. we can't say that before we watch the episode. I can definitely not trust no, Jeb's assessment before we watch the episode. So, no. Um. Yes. Let's begin. Everyone at zero. I am. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Wow. Ten yeah. wasting our time yeah. as always. You Women being late. Classic. Why is this a handheld? Looks really bad. I hate this character. I wish he had died. Man, this dialogue's already abysmal. Why is... It looks really sh... What is the issue? I'm trying to understand why it's shot the way it is. It is very confusing. It looks... It does look quite amateurish. It does. It's the lighting here. It's really flat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nick is oh, hilarious. in this episode. Reminds me of that dude in fucking Flash. What's his face? Chester. Chester, yes. Yeah. <laughs> It kind of feels like, as well, now we watch this dialogue, it feels really stiff. This was really stiff. I think they're trying to go for awkward, but it's not. Yeah. The oh, I feel The acting isn't is showing the intricacies of it. No, the acting here is garbage. Their delivery is really shit. You could just turn your phone off. And, like, you can go to your settings and go to audio and yes, exactly. lower. It also, that phone looks like a touchscreen. I can't confirm it is. I mean, it's super easy to put your phone on silent, even if the button isn't working. Also, this dialogue annoys me because it's basically trying to do setup, but these characters shouldn't need to do this because he keeps coming here. It's the typical chip that does exposition where it doesn't make sense to do exposition. Member, that's me. <laughs> what is this? Are we sure we're watching Doctor Who? <laughs> oh, God, God. Yeah, this is what I thought as well. When I was watching this opening, it just felt like a completely different show. This doesn't feel like I'm watching Doctor Who right now, and I get this is like setting up. Doesn't it's doing it poorly. I get this is doing it set up, but just this. Oh, Jesus Christ! This doesn't. It's been three and a half minutes. 
the score here is so weird. This weird guitar, dude. <laughs> Acoustic guitar. <laughs> oh, now we oh, catch no, the TARDIS, of course. Oh, oh my god. god. The basing already is garbage. Oh yeah, remember the Flux guys? <laughs> oh, that was a thing. <laughs> remember how it destroyed the entire universe and she never undid that. Yeah, she's focusing more on, her, on clean up the TARDIS than clean up the fucking universe. I know, yeah, right? like cobwebs and shit. No. My instant issue is Dan oh, and Yaz. Are so... oh, Dan and Yaz are just... not near the door, and they just yeah. have seven seconds left. <laughs> that. So I was having fun with. Oh the God! What? Oh what? my God! The lighting. What the, the fuck is that? <laughs> that looks interesting. It looked interesting. Not good interesting. Like... Just interesting. <laughs> I don't know how they ended up here. To be honest, I don't know how the TARDIS allowed that. Wait, do they explain it? I don't know. I mean, Doctor, it looks like it's fucking about to like explode or some shit, and you're very calm. Use your screwdriver. Yeah. No. Analyze the. Okay. Yeah, fucking okay, does, no. it does everything in this era. Man, I hate the way she uses the screwdriver. Yeah, by absolutely. <laughs> yeah. She scans where she is, not scan the tires. Just like oh, yeah. Liverpool. Oh no, Dan should be like upset that he's in Manchester. Come on, connect it to the fact that he's. Yeah, in he did. Man. That's wow, consistent character writing. <laughs> What, what the that? fuck was that? <laughs> what was it? What, what was it? What was it? That dramatic pause and then just yeah, come on. There you on. go. Yeah, Manx. See, there you go. Uh, why does it chip where I try so hard to be a superhero movie? <laughs> if I was doing this, like, if they were uh, saying it in Manchester, I'd have a Manchester United fan in this, and there'd be some sort of comedy between Dan and that character. That'd be something. A little also, bit of nice comedy. Agents of Shield. Also, in season five. I want you to take note that Chibnall said he didn't like Dot Two being all about running through corridors, get chased by monsters. This is this episode in a nutshell. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> well, and you, also, you remember Forty Two, don't you? That episode was literally yeah, that is literally yeah. the antithesis <laughs> that... of what Chibnall said. And take day. take note of how every time yeah. these characters die, because a common defense of the plot armor is where they die. That is... <laughs> okay. Well, that's like saying that. The Suicide Squad doesn't have plot armor <laughs> simply because a few characters die. Stupid. Identify. Okay. Why did you need to identify uh -huh. him if you wanted to kill him? I don't. <laughs> well, I, don't know, I imagine it's like if it's not the person they're looking for, they're gonna kill them, and that's Maybe. why they need to that identify. Might be why. See, yeah, what? see, that is that's a, that's touch screen. Huh? That's a touch screen phone. And it's a Samsung one, isn't it? Seems like Set up that she's gonna get a love interest. Oh, it's gonna be that dude. I already forgot his name, but yeah. So if they're gonna run with the thing with the Dalek, oh, he has to identify everybody. You can't then have random kills. They gotta, like, announce themselves with identify. Man, how many people does she know? I was yeah, actively messaging people. Like I was actively messaging people on New, uh, New Year's when it hit midnight, and not gonna lie, I did not get that many notifications. <laughs> she, <laughs> she's, she doesn't like it. What? I'm so confused. Okay, it doesn't know that. One. Keep, keep oh, that in mind. Oh, is it? Is oh, it that is a scar. Interesting. Hmm. There was a Dalek invasion literally this time last year. Oh, oh my god, yeah. There not was. only that, but I, um, he was. They killed the Daleks in uh, fucking Vanquishers or whatever the finale of Flux was called. Yeah, so I do yeah, like the line. I do like the line. <laughs> I am not Nick from the Meta Sense because oh. Nicholas Briggs does the voice. Yeah, I've heard people say that on Twitter. Oh, oh now they have like a minigun for their why does blaster. That, why do they need a minigun? I see because it's an executioner. I don't know. It doesn't... It's a, it's a fetish. What? Daleks as a shoot me? What? What? <laughs> what the fuck? This is my Sonic to jam its weapons. Space, so you can just do that? No, seriously. Why is the doctor asking why is he ki why is the Dalek killing people? That's the most stupid question you can ask. Oh, da the Daleks evolved then. That's good. The Daleks said learn how to aim better for a little more loud. But, okay. Oh, that was a... Hey, that was, again, I'd say no plot armor there. so far. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there uh, isn't any. Uh, so far. That, that bit, that um, interaction where they go, Daleks land, that's like probably the only really good bit in this episode, because I like that yeah. they land. Yeah, so I was like, hey, good on you. I don't know, I really miss the times in like, was it Parting of the Ways? 
Is that the season one finale? Where like the yes. way they try to deal with the Daleks is like super like they have to plan ahead and shit like that. And even then, all of them die. I, I, well, I like the. Uh, I don't like how it's been shot, but the idea of yeah, using a Dutch okay? angle here mm -hmm. is fitting. Sure. I just think the way they're using it is really shit. They do not know how shot composition works. Megan Mobile, is that what that says? I think so. <laughs> These noises! <laughs> is this. Why is this. Why does this look like this is like a YouTube parody? Yes. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it, feels, it, feels, it feels like a Tom Scott video. Exactly. <laughs> no, it does actually, but Tom Scott videos are actually funny. Honestly, if you give this this scene to Tom Scott, he Two makes it funny. <laughs> 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 I like how Yaz was smiling as she was walking out of the fucking TARDIS and she only realized that she's not at the beach after she's already out. Oh my god, this is a YouTube episode of Doctor Who. <laughs> I feel like, like, restrictions really hit this one. I don't know why. See that? That's like, good though, yeah. She's cause... running. Oh, running. She's running. Dan running so funny. <laughs> uh, there, she's running to go to get him before he can get exterminated. Yes. She's not trying yes. to figure out the thing after she wants to save this one person. That is in character. So I don't know why the Dalek has to fire like 10 shots at once. Once yeah, exactly. yeah. It kills you it kills you when you it kills you on one shot. Idea of a machine gun. Yeah. It kills like, you on one shot. Like, yeah. If I were to it's a if, beam. I, if I were to use my head cannon and I think it's a fair inference. The reason oh. for this type of gun is because time lords can regenerate. So you want multiple shots at once. Mm -hmm. oh, so you just have 12 shots. <laughs> yes, apparently, but... <laughs> a rapid fire would kill Time Lords. That's why I assume they have it. What is it with Doctor Who and just wasting, like, really good comedians? I don't know. It seems, it's a yeah, running theme that they just don't know how to use comedians. They wasted Lee Mack in Series 11. Yeah. <laughs> and now they're wasting this person who's actually kind of funny. Two people in this building about to die unless we stop it. Yes, thanks for. So why isn't he here? Yep, that's the idea. This is what annoys me most about Chimnal Dialogue. It's like, how can we deliver the most obvious to them? And it's like, you need something. You need to, to make it them. as obvious as possible for the audience to properly understand what's going on. So imagine the building's kind of like time locked or something like that. And it's uh, something yes. like that. Wait, you don't need to identify him? Not this yeah. time, apparently. Well, I think. Time. Oh wait, no. This does get explained. Never mind. No, it's okay. fine. Okay. Oh, okay. They're aware of the time loop happening. I like how she just basically confirms she never checks the stuff, and like, she never knew any of this stuff was being brought in, like ever. Oh my god. No wonder why the place is doing shit. Bruh. Poor management. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How's like, unless he does it when she's not in, but she's the manager of the place. It's like. You went past stuff as weapons, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then just turn it off. No, don't answer it. Just turn your goddamn phone off, you stupid woman. Sir. Oh, what are you doing? You know, you're you're aware that it's coming. Oh god. Just, it's like you're. This thing know, killed you. Is this supposed to be comedy? Yes. Yes, it is. Wow, she has the full concept of what she's doing. That's um, I don't really, I don't mind that. Yeah, I think she got away too fast. Like, give her a few deaths, meet with, the, meet up with the doctor, and then I'd buy it. Second time I've failed to save him. Second time the Dalek's been cleverer than us. Yes. God, why? You don't you need to say any of that. You could say the first line because I think that expresses concern. Mm -hmm. But second, second line, no. All you need to do is have the doctor say not again. <laughs> Yeah, it's so easy. Alex strategy is so blame. Says you. There's no point making a room for it. Says you. Like, uh, There's no point making a room. Actually, there is, as we'll see later in the episode. <laughs> dead. Second time round. Dan, how are you so calm? <laughs> yes. Oh, yes, you're about to what? die. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? So it's not the Daleks doing it. Yeah. yeah. There's something else yes. causing this time loop. Well, there's only one thing it could be, but, you know. Hey, we reset again. Fun times. But it's reset differently, though. 
Yeah, that's what this one that confuses. In a time beat, you should be at your original position. Yeah, and it, uh, it seemed to be when the keys were being handed over to Nick. Yeah. That seems to be the point in time where it's locked in. Which wouldn't that wouldn't that mean that the doctor wouldn't be able to get inside the time loop? It seems weird I, uh, that the TARDIS can just get inside, especially by accident. My time. I don't know. Die. Same distance. The audio mixing there was bad, but that could have been a good yeah, she, joke. He sounded really quiet. I yeah. think that joke can be really cool if you execute it way better. Yeah. See, I'll, I'll give Chibnall, um the uh, props for writing that joke, because in the script that probably worked out better than it did on screen. What? So what annoys me, in RTD era, probably even Moffat, you would get differing reactions to the situation and they'll either clash or compliment. Mm. So you get certain dynamics and groups. This is what Midnight did well. Here, it's none of that. There's no death, there's no conflict, nothing. It's just, oh, we're in the situation now. That's that. At least she's using it way more. Yeah, as I said, this this would be a perfect RTD episode because it's character. And you're... This is not funny, Chibnall. It's not funny at all. <laughs> How do people not know where the fuck Daleks are? This, oh, I hate this so much. <laughs> Even uh, even remember when they just remember when they justified it with Amy <laughs> or uh, with Donna? It's like the plot why is it that? Oh no! No way! No way! How are you no missing? No way! How are you missing? How are you missing? They're not even dodgy. What? They're not even dodgy. How are you missing? I missed every. There was single... even worse than the Santarans oh in episode two of that's, Flux. That is way worse than the Santarans one. But it's okay <laughs> because moving. stories can't last longer than five minutes. No, they can't. <laughs> it has been 19 minutes that... since the episode started, though, so. <laughs> that's not. In... That was an issue because, well, they died previous and they don't stay dead. Why do you need to ask them to surrender? Can't you just open no, the door? Yeah, shoot Daleks. Shoot the door yeah. down. You can get in. Shoot the door down. Yeah, you have a fucking mini gun attached to your body. <laughs> <laughs> and remember when um, series one? Wait, wait, Daleks, wait! What the fuck is happening? Uh, oh yeah, this. Oh, what? Lewis, Connor's been warning me about this. What? People what? defend this. They're saying this isn't what? creepy <laughs> at all or stalkery. A bit. It is. <laughs> oh my fucking god, Chibnall, how your self-awareness is, man, it has no bounds. But anyway, yeah. so remember yeah, in series I'm one... Weird. Yes, yes, she is weird. Very remember weird. in series one... Um, it's not hard! Finale, <laughs> anyway, sorry, the, Jeff. In the finale where the Daleks were burning through the door, they have burner thingies that could burn through that metal. No, yeah, not anymore. No, he's not. He's not the reason. This is why I hate this character because. Oh, this it... character is such a twat. He's your only customer, lady. Not only is she a terrible person, she's also not a great actress. She's not. No. Is she about to kill Are you actually. Are you brain really? dead? I'm not gonna do that. Just shoot them. Just shoot them. If your mission is to kill them, just shoot them. Just, yeah, just kill them. Why are you just standing there? There we go. They're perfectly against that shot. Man! So now, <laughs> not the other, other side. I'm glad it doesn't change its like angle of shooting to then go to them. Dots could do that if you just didn't turn know. it off. Stop answering it. <laughs> just turn it off. It's not hard. <laughs> just turn your goddamn phone off, you stupid person. You haven't even searched the full room. Yeah, there's boxes out there. There's boxes yeah. you can open. Through stuff. Oh my god, the way she delivered no that way. line. <laughs> my. God. God, I hate these fucking actors. Uh, the Daleks tried now to get through the door. Only now is it trying. Hey, at least Daleks. <laughs> oh, they did what we said like, it should oh, do. Oh, yes, you should. Oh, oh, yes, you Don't no. stand right behind the door. Literally, what? they could hide around here and try and evade the Dalek. Don't worry, it can miss. It, it misses point oh, blank. Okay, oh, so they're coming back right. a minute later. Alright, that's. Alright, fine. 
yeah, not the really issue well they explained. Yeah. yeah, the shots lingering on uh, her phones, uh, on her phone, showing the time, yeah. were way yeah, yeah, yeah. too quick. That was the issue. Yeah. Exactly. Do you know what I find funny? She went and, like she instantly came to this conclusion after the second time. What I find funny, she went, oh, it depends on the outlook, either we escape the loop, and the Dalek doesn't kill us, or we die in the loop, and I'm like, the Dalek can kill you after the loop anyway. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> we need to be unpredictable, so the Dalek can't guess what we're gonna do next. Yes, yeah, just... Uh, you can they can hear you. The no, the they room. won't be expecting this. Yeah, the, it, they won't. Like, literally, when... this, the first time they saw uh, they saw the, this lady, they were like, oh, we predicted your change. Why did it take the Dalek so long? Also, the Daleks probably heard what she said. Yeah. Just kill them, please, and get this over with. Just kill them, 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 kill them. Then kill them! Why are you having a chat about it? Why are we having a chat? Oh, do it then. Then why are you killing everyone else? Stop fucking around and do it then. Well, it already said it. they're gonna kill you until the time loop closes. The Dalek could have killed them like 20 times by now. You are trapped. Yeah. She literally said they were trapped. Yeah, they they were trapped. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they won before. So. That music cut was really weird. There was like no transition, it just went. Wait, it could just tell. <laughs> Don't. Wait, it could just teleport. Why didn't. Oh my god. Wait, but how. I'm confused, I how can know. it just teleport? If it can, why didn't it just teleport past the door? Dude, it's gonna get worse. There's gonna be more than one Dalek this entire time. No way. Oh. There's gonna be f a total of, of at least three. No way, fuck sake. You'd think you'd have one at each person that you've anticipated their change, but no. See? Uh... I'll keep the one on reception busy. You two try and figure ourselves to stop all of this. Manage to stay alive. No, this is stupid. He's such, he's such a bad actor. Yeah, he doesn't, and it's stupid. This is a stupid plan. She didn't. She, she, she didn't. She, she, she tried. She attempted to save the Earth and left the rest of the universe to die. Yeah. Um. But that, this is a stupid plan. Just go to the fifth floor. What is happening? <laughs> Ah, evil Dan the chat. <laughs> Just go to the fifth floor. Fifth floor. Are people actually, is this episode really gonna end with them getting together? Like, how? Yes. Yes, sir. Wow. As people have said, it is a rom com, so, yeah. This is really bad, though. There's not much rom or com, I admit. Mean. <laughs> no. I mean, there's a lot of. Calm, just it's not good. Calm. Oh no, but we're here. We're here. Why do you need to identify? Oh, boy. You're you, he's you been killed, killed three no. times. They would know this. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> Shoot him. Kill him. Just kill him. Ah, uh, here we go. Hey, we're here. I am overwhelmed, but running around them in circles seems to be working for some reason. <laughs> it is the worst thing I've Let's ever go. seen in my entire life. Oh my god. <laughs> Mr. Tardis said, this is okay, because it's just a bit of fun. It's not fun. Oh, fuck off. Not Why is it not blue? Why is it not blue? Oh, took a while for you to realize that. Yeah. I don't know why Dad just yeah, stopped, right. to be honest. Yeah, just continue. Irre you just okay, figure out a way to completely okay. bypass the way them shooting at you. Just continue doing you know it. It would be really cool to do in this kind of story. The trauma of dying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. to experience that. This. So then. Keep why dying aren't you going to, to the fifth floor? Wasn't that the plan? Yeah, it is. But then why they keep it... dying. I don't know. <laughs> they keep dying and trying to process what's happening. Yeah. There is, was an episode. Should be key. Well, it would have been there interesting if they had the the loop be longer. Except uh, instead of being like eight minutes and every time it takes one less minute it's like you have 20 minutes and have them die more you know times so you can actually explore it you know what show has done the time loop aspect idea like better than this episode has mm. legends of fucking tomorrow yes yeah. yes it that episode is like really fun <laughs> well legends Wait, of like, tomorrow is a lot of fun yeah the these two should have complementary um thoughts on the matter but clash because of how they want to solve it they get over there, so five romance through that. That could be an like interesting thing. Like how Moffat would write it, yeah. Dan would be scared of repeatedly dying, especially because he hasn't made amends with Diane. Yaz is trying to keep hope. 
and the Doctor's trying to figure it all out to get them all to come together. Oh, is wow, this what she considers romance? Yes. This is not funny, Chibnall. Hmm. Can we cut away from this? I don't like. I don't have anything to care really about these characters. I don't this... like her. She's been an asshole. The thing is, she has like an interesting concept because she's like, I'm in this place I really hate. I want to try and find yeah, exactly. a way out. It, Nick's got Happy nothing. To be actually, like stuck. In the her mom hasn't called her yet. Right now. Nick to me is a bit of a caricature, but apart from being interested yes. in her. God, then why don't you come down here? Just go to the fifth floor, you moron. Yeah, I just don't care. I don't care about that part of the story. Maybe scan the room with your. Okay. Your... Take a look. Yeah. Would it just be? Why aren't you using your screwdriver? Just be a... Yeah, just use the screwdriver. Too. You have it in your hand. Why are you going for the beans <laughs> and not the room with full of stuff? Oh, that's gross. Oh, that's gonna be a setup for something, isn't it? I think so, yeah. We're gonna go oh, back oh, three stop. years in time. <laughs> the stuff being stored is stuff here set up. I can't confirm that. I don't know if the beats specifically are. Remember, management doesn't know anything about this. What is it with Chip? Oh, hey, she, she said color. the same thing that the, yes. the woman said. I always forget her name. Surrender. No way! No him. way! <laughs> By the way, yeah. <laughs> is it just me or is when the Dalek shoots, doesn't it look completely off? Like the coloring? Yes. It, it, it's, it looks it's like, like there's no. The... It's just a blue line. Yeah. It with it really highlighting. Yeah, it looks like the. The video's been corrupted. It's weird. I want to spoil something. The Daleks never hit a mobile target in this episode. <laughs> No, At no, all. No. They're all in mobile, point blank, or they let you themselves die. You remember popping in the ways how fucking brutal they were? Remember in yes. Doomsday they were fighting yeah. fucking Cybermen? <laughs> remember Dalek? <laughs> I remember Dalek. I remember Dalek, it's great. I showed a clip of that on Twitter. Remember Soul and Earth when they murdered all of fucking unit and everything else? Yeah. With ease. Hey, there- Oh, is this an emotional moment? Oh. Yes. Oh, yeah, that badly noticed. Okay, these guys are proper. Okay. Yeah. Okay, alright. Man, he's-, he's so It's like- I like how- It's like Tim said, he- <laughs> It's like Tim said, we got a- an Anna no. here. No! Chip- no. Chip no standard is, they're not stalkery if they don't say anything to the person. They're not stalking, it's public information. <laughs> oh my god! It's like if you follow someone for months and you don't say anything to them, that's uh, fine. Chibnall's weird moms. I wanna show this episode to that Star Wars girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she'd love it. This episode's so bad. Nothing, just nothing of it run around it. Work. Just run around it. Clearly, you can't just run, just run around, around it. it. Ah, uh, the dialogue. Your attempts to evade us has been futile. They you said they didn't already, you idiot. <laughs> yeah, literally they did. <laughs> Actually, yeah, the dialogue that they had before the last time that uh, the doctor died was about the fact that the Dalek didn't know what was causing the time loop. That's a bit of a way. It was your idea. <laughs> She literally chose So it was your idea. Okay, so you Why did do it. they need that reason to kill the doctor? Yeah, they don't need. Her death has yeah, always, always been the priority of the Dalek race. Been. She's literally the oncoming storm. Oh, there's a Dalek behind them. This is so shit. I want to point out none of these characters know they're actually going to return still, aside from the yeah. doctor, and then no panic. Meet on the fifth floor. Yeah. yeah. Why? Why? What? I just like how she fucked over the plan completely. No, 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 to not thinking. get killed, despite the plan was to not get killed. It, just run. Run. Go. You have one last minute now. Okay. He's a good-hearted weirdo stalker. This is so strange. <laughs> oh, they, they did it. <laughs> ah, that is the first. It's gonna get stronger. To be fair, the Phasmin scene is the, well, Yaz's scene is the best scene in this episode. Or to be fair, saying uh, a good-hearted weirdo and her looking at the Doctor is like, yeah, that, that does describe the Doctor, but um... Yeah, but the Doctor's not a stalker. Yeah, that is a... 
Yeah. <laughs> Not the stalker in a traditional sense. You know, he's an actual stalker. Then we're meant to go to. Then why aren't you running? Also, why hasn't the Dalek teleported here? Why the fuck are the Daleks? Oh yeah, the Dalek teleported last time. They didn't this time. Also, that's stupid. That makes no sense. Okay, so it's already been over a minute, so he she, he should already be dead. But either way, why did are they teleport here and shoot him? Are you ready? Oh, wow. Teleport to the oh, reception. Are you ready? There's no way they're missing. They should be dead. Are you ready? You're dead. You're dead. It's gonna You're be dead. worse. You're dead. You're dead. It's gonna be You're worse. Dead. It's gonna be worse than missing. Okay. It's gonna be worse. You're good, you're still dead I but anyway, so dead. her logic about him oh not surviving God, till 5 2 makes no sense. Oh that no, he did it. Oh, no God. way. Stop shooting. <laughs> Stop shooting. Oh, what what is this? Palpatine all over again. <laughs> Man, that wow. Run, 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 run. Run, 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 Go! Run! Fuck off. Are you gonna oh, run or? So but her logic about him not surviving till 5 2 makes absolutely no sense. Considering. Dalek can take out in the entirety of unit, but this guy, Nick, he can duck. <laughs> because, like, <laughs> uh, the fact that Nick, uh, the fact that they reset every time uh, at the place that, like, they were, but the Daleks apparently they can teleport and be at other places, that means that it's not, like, written in stone that he has to die at a certain point. So her yeah, logic makes no sense. There's no way he's died the exact same time. Yep, and also, it makes no sense that the doctor would be able to get to him in time anyway, because it, 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 she said 5-2, uh, and it was already 5-2 when she, the loop restarted, which meant they had less than a minute uh, to have that conversation, which she wasted time in. I don't know why they seem... Got, we still got 20 minutes to go. What? Really? This felt... Yeah. Come on. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you'll die if you like. You don't. Yeah. Like, I'm... What? You Fuck can't... off. Oh, actually, no. They spent years together. Oh. Actually, I was about to say. No, no, I don't. No, no. Fuck that for a second. You got. <laughs> you got her being a retard, and then she goes, "Who the hell are you?" It's not really an insult, and Yaz is like, oh, you can't just sort my mate. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Nah, <laughs> there was no insult to be had there. <laughs> my friend. <laughs> Man. Sorry. <laughs> Why is Dan the smartest? Always has been the smartest. It is evil Dan persona. Season I wonder three. if you should have done this before, Doctor. Oh, wow, you probably should have done this way earlier. Man, that seems like real fucking useful. That's oh, oh, delivery. God. Oh God! You get your mom to call Shut up! Exactly ten seconds to midnight. Absolutely not. She's not doing that. So that's why the phone's been fucking set up, and she just refuses to turn it off. I'll try. I'll try. Oh, did you notice that? Notice what? The the that shot was at a, like a lower frame rate. Oh yeah, I, I thought it was my computer. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's, that. that's oh. the episode. Oh, that's the actual episode. You'll have to. I thought my computer was there. lagging. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> we improve. We fail again. This is our great speech. I haven't been listening. We learn to trust. <laughs> I don't care about a word coming out of her mouth. This is the worst speech. This is ever. the worst, yeah. Imagine nah, like this doesn't be all for fifty five. <laughs> I mean yeah. <laughs> imagine like imagine going from but Imagine going from the Imagine going from a Rings of Akatan speech to just this. <laughs> Imagine going from yeah. the goddamn Voyage of the Dam speech. I hate the way you know this what? Yes, yes, episode yes, is shot. Time. Oh, they teleported! This oh, is basically a time loop Voyage of the Damned. It actually is, actually. Except Voyage of the Damned is kind of Wait, good. which episode Did is you... Voyage of the Damned? The Titanic. Uh, Titanic. Titanic. Oh, Titanic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, I love oh, that episode okay. so much. But you get everything about the characters. Man, I love that episode. Oh, we teleported okay, again. Oh, no, it it didn't oh, last so loop, good. and it hasn't started shooting. It is. Um, okay. Why didn't you just shoot her? What? What's the point now? Oh, my oh come on. No God. fucking way, oh, dude. My... She's very fucking oh. moving. Seriously. Just run around. <laughs> Why did they stop shooting? <laughs> Unstop no, them out unless really you run fun. around it. This episode is really... Guys, this episode is so fun. Uh, sure. <laughs> This I, I never hilarious. want you to watch this episode again.
It's so I haven't... fun. <laughs> I we actually haven't laughed once at any of the jokes made in this I've episode. Laughed at, no. I've laughed at the episode. Yeah, I haven't left it. with the episode. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> this episode is pathetic. I apologize for my curry right hilarious. now. Then this episode. <laughs> just duck. You know that works. Is it just me, or are the characters are getting more like bland as it goes? Yeah. That's very interesting to think about. That is the not fuck what was that noise? sounds like. Yeah. That is not yeah. what it sounds like. <laughs> it sounds like oh, it's the moment. Is it's the moment. Is this going to be the best scene in the show? In this episode? episode? Yes, this, this is the best scene. You feel about it? Is it that obvious? Maybe not to a good heart, do you, though? I spent four years traveling the world with you. I saw it then. I don't know what to do, Dad. I don't like the way this is shot. I've never told anyone, or even myself. I took way too long to tell somebody that I liked them, and then... The universe ended and everything got messy. I mean, Diane is a bit of a cunt, but yeah. Man. That acting and from Mandip was not good. Um, that's the ending of probably the best scene in the episode. Yeah, that was good. That was, good. I that was unironically was good. good. They actually used the fact that they were alone together for like years and yeah. used that. If only they had See, explored the that in that episode as opposed to just being like, like, ah yes, let's fucking drop a body. You know what if I find? I what? What, the, the Daleks are meant to be master logicians and strategists. If they know the TARDIS is causing it, they would go to where the TARDIS is every time at the start of the loop and kill the Doctor. And with this many Daleks, they could separate themselves across all points and close the loop. They don't do any of that. She just said I'm angry and oh, that's hilarious. I am angry. <laughs> How does it make you feel? <laughs> angry. Ang oh, but yeah, like, right now there should be Daleks surrounding that TARDIS because they know that's you know the source. I, act I actually miss Graham and Ryan. I actually miss them. Oh, uh, fucking Bradley Walsh was so much more fun yeah, to watch. Yeah, I wish Bradley yeah, Walsh was in this. My actions are catching up with me. Again. Didn't she say that like last yeah. season? The thing is, remember when the doctor, Levith Doctor felt this had left Amy and Rory to live their lives in series six? Yeah. The doctor should mm. be doing that. No, I would just say, I think Mandip's acting there was good when the doctor told her to go. What I don't like is that they make it mutual, because again, Rose mm -hmm. is the reason why the doctor doesn't. And River. Yeah. Yes, River, obviously. Can't shoot for shit. Oh, Look at that! The light when it's shooting, the like the lighting goes way down. The yeah, fucking yeah, it's really weird. Exposure goes way down. That's the again. Yeah. Notice how every time in the Dalek Chimney episode, there's a room that's just one color and it's just full of it. They did this last last special. Yeah, this is the green room. Yeah, that one. Remember in the in last, the last one, that was the room, purple room, right? The blue room, and then it turned green. <laughs> yeah. It just actually kind of like, it sums up Chibble because he like, he's so bland. It was just one solid blandness. Oh, this is so, oh, please just move on. I can't believe I'm saying this, but go back to Yaz. <laughs> I mean, I don't know she's the best. <laughs> oh, oh, that, I'd say her and Dan are the best characters of this episode, simply because they had one scene that was like, One good. actually okay scene. <laughs> oh, Why are the three Daleks all coming together? Why not no disperse idea, yourself? Divide and conquer, my dude. You three can teleport. I hate how if they center on that location and teleport yeah, there. Daleks. If you know where the loot begins for the doctor, start there every time. No, they're stupid. Daleks they're evil, are not intelligent. Them really dumb. It's okay. Plot armor is just a bit of fun, <laughs> and in every story. As we know, guys. <laughs> Plot armor is what allows stories to last longer than five minutes. So I think you all should shut the fuck up. You're bad faith because it's so common you can't hold this standard. We're all just being disingenuous. <laughs> yeah, but you're a fucking sexist. Oh, I like how they actually go to the TARDIS, realizing, yeah, hey, this might be where it. she is. Fake stop, her. Oh, shut the fuck up. The Daleks aren't this stupid. <laughs> this is so fucking garbage. I hate this. I so can't wait for this era to be done. I just, I need RTD back <laughs> with all my heart. Dear Lord. Start at the TARDIS, Daleks. Go to the TARDIS. You can teleport, Daleks. You know what elevate is, Daleks. You have said elevate. Remember, why? Dalek. Wait, why? Why is the <laughs> elevator working this time? They, they made it. They, <laughs> they, they shot it last time they, from yeah, the they outside. Shot it last time. 
Yep. Yeah. Oh, wait, that's true. Oh, she's this is my problem. This is my problem well with Chibnall Harry. He can't pay attention to basic details. No, he can't. Just trying to say Happy New Year, really. And I miss you. Man, this scene would be really cool if this character was actually good. <laughs> if she was an RTD character. Are you drunk? God, are you ill? Happy New Year. I love you, but I have to go. Haha, <laughs> this is a very funny episode. Man, that, they could have actually played a really good moment there. Man, and they thought made it into a comedy scene. Remember I don't Donna, think it's a funny episode. Remember Donna episode. and her mom? Oh, and how her mom yes. didn't like like Donna, like she always was picking on her, but until the in fucking journeys, well, yeah, then journeys she treated her like, oh, yeah, and she's like, I, she's my daughter, you don't get to talk yeah. about her like that. And the doctor's mm -hmm. like, maybe you should tell her that more often. Oh my god, oh my god, he wasn't even moving, but yeah, I like how Chibbles go for like literally the most obvious jokes they call it humor. Mm -hmm. Oh, listen, like the reason why. Oh my god, kill yourself. The reason why I um, yeah, you know I mentioned what, Donna and her mom is because it, it was often though. played for jokes, the way her mom treated her. But it's actually like character based, and it's not always played for jokes, and it has serious moments for it. Yeah, there's always like a serious undertone, a darker one. Remember, they killed them seven times, so not plot armor, even though they let them kill them and it's point blank. Mm. It's like, why well, yes, when you make it impossible for them to miss, they're not going to miss. Mm -hmm. Yep. Can Chendal stop making the dialogue say, Daleks do not have... Every yeah, time exactly. I hate the dialogue so much for the Dalek. It just comes across like he actively doesn't like the Daleks, and he's making them seem stupid. How are they there before the Dalek? Shoot, 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 shoot. Oh, oh no, you god. missed. Oh my god! He <laughs> shot between the two! No way. Yeah, the plot here's armor the thing, though. is okay. No, here's the thing, though. No way are you missing is that. So dumb. They're because running they in a straight right line! If they die right here, the plan is fucked. If they die right here, they're they dead forever, yeah. Do you want me to add something else to you? Did you notice yeah, the editing actually had them shooting at the characters, but they just made it look like they didn't? Uh, like seriously, how does sh just shots like that like spray when the gun doesn't move? That literally can't happen. It's physically impossible. It was that shooter, 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 shooter. It's like yeah, why making it black would change things. The dot. The dogs are never struggled with darkness, even with interference. Just shoot it. Oh, she wasn't talking there. If you did, can't answer the phone there. if you don't. If you're not there at the phone, how can you answer the phone? Oh, did she use the fucking screwdriver to answer the phone? Was that what they were implying? I don't know. I, I think that is it. It's a phone. You can. Oh. How can't you identify the doctor's voice? They literally can detect human life. Yeah, they can, and they can detect Man, electronic devices. Bad. Exactly, they've been doing it since series Are one. Are you ready for the best cameo ever? What is the best cameo ever? Oh, it's the, You'll see. the dude from... Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. don't spoil, no. We do not spoil even if we already know. Okay. We got reacting all. all right. The amazing cameo. Oh, I'm, gonna, oh, I'm gonna all so hard. It's your favorite character from the series. Come on. You definitely it's the most memorable him. character. You are alive. <laughs> no you way. weren't shot, you idiot! They're, they're oh, gonna kiss so now. Cringe. They're gonna kiss oh, this now. This is so cringe. This is so cringe. No, that no, green no, screen, no. though. <laughs> don't. Bruh. They're really doing it. They're really doing oh. it. Uh, uh, I'm hoping. Uh, he says, no, I can't. I can't because I'm a Time Lord. So I'm hoping that's what they do. Oh, God, if they actually, I'm gonna. I'd be very annoyed if they do it after, like, make it very clear that oh Yaz is the boy. Why? Oh my god, it's him! I never thought I'd see him again in that super famous episode. It's. It's. I don't even know his name. I, I have no know. idea. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea if he has a name. But yeah, it's a uh, woman who felt you were man. Crane guy. Crane guy. Crane guy. He wants to feel special. Imagine if it was. Um... <laughs> this is gonna go in two episodes. <laughs> I know. Imagine if it was Graham going, you're doing it, mate. <laughs> Actually, that'd be really cool if it was Graham and Ryan. That'd be really yeah. cool. Yeah, I'd like that. I'd just have Me them two be I like, ha them. saying Happy New Year to each other and they see the fucking fireworks. It's not good. By the way, this mate. is how they're going to brush the Phasmid stuff, I think. I don't think they're going to continue it after this. Oh, no, they're not. We say lots of things. We all say lots of things we don't mean. 
I think they kind of just. I think that's it. Oh, and they got together, which is not at all weird. <laughs> okay. Yeah, just say that to the guy who's in the taxi. He's totally not going to think you're crazy. <laughs> is this? <laughs> what is this dialogue? I don't get any. What? I don't get any character out of this. No, there's no character. What? They're just it's recounting so events that have happened. It'd be like, ah, there's oh, there, by the a way. lot of this They're just there. Oh, okay. okay. Next side oh. trailer. Still yeah. got the next side trailer. Oh, well, then your uh, profile picture is oh, gonna make right. sense. That was right shit. There. Yes. That was uh, fucking that. garbage. I hated that. Uh, uh, guys, guys, it was meant to be fun. We can't say plot armor. It was meant to be fun. Yeah. I did not you have fun. The Dalek, <laughs> yeah, right. Remember the Dalek Cybermen interaction I'm, where uh, they're both threats, but also cool. it was oh, comedy. So good. Oh, here we go. Yes. Oh, I agree. Legend. Oh, boy. Of the. Oh, man. Legend of the. Great, great. Whoa. And. That's well, that was the it. The best Dalek episode of the Chibnall era. Uh, and it was garbage. <clears throat> well, I don't think it, is it I the... disagree with Terry's. Oh. I think uh, oh, it is the best, Resolution yeah. is. I think Revolution is the worst and then Resolution. Yeah, I think Rev I think Revolution, Resolution, and then this. Yeah. <laughs> I, yes. I can't give up names. They all, they all stand the fucking same. <laughs> uh, Here's the thing, though. They're all, like, twos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're really bad. I mean, I think mm. I'd give this one a three, but for enjoyment, I think it's the one I like the least. I wanna, I'm want to. i going to give it a one, because it actually destroys the Daleks, and it, it kind of destroys any future conflict, because the Doctor could just use her sonic so screwdriver to confuse them. You could just duck for Daleks, or walk around them. Um, what else can you do? Uh, you could interfere with their... You could make her feel dark and interfere with their night vision. It's like... Chibnall doesn't know how Daleks function in any form. That's so fucking boring, dude. Dear Lord. That was really boring. Like, insanely boring. Mm. I don't, I don't, I don't love understand it when, I love it when I love it when Daleks are incompetent buffoons. It's just a bit of fun. <laughs> I'll probably get it to my right. fucking plot armor. Fucking tirade shite. Um, to give context prior to the audience, um, when there's plot armor in the Dot 2 episode, that's quite significant. War of the Sun and Ness. Twitter likes to go to a bit of a meltdown for the fandom. You've got one side that is against the plot armor, fights silly, and you've got the other that's like, it's prevalent in all media, or it's just a bit of fun. Um, it's not actually that big of an issue. So, that's the context. This Atar just sits on the side that it's not an issue, and that's fine if you don't find it an issue, I don't care. What is an issue is if you go to and assume bad faith on people's standards, um, just because it's so common doesn't make it any less of an issue, nor does it make someone's standards broken. What makes it broken is if they see it in something, um, especially that they enjoy, that they just don't um, agree with it or they try to make defenses they would normally make for the terrible media. That's what we call bad faith. Uh, the reason why in this case it is categorically plot armor is the Daleks are the deadliest creatures in the universe, established by this episode, established by the show. They have insanely good aim. Um, Dalek, Stolen Earth, the Doomsday, um, Army of Ghosts 2 part of Evolution of the Daleks. Basically, most Dalek stories will have very good aim. Um, Moffat's later stuff didn't, but I digress. Which means that it's established that they could shoot really well, and they are designed to do that. They are a killing machine, and not only that, uh, they evolve themselves to be even better, and this is an execution Dalek. Their sole purpose is to execute, so these are even better than a standard. And for a standard, for an execution Dalek to never hit a single shot while they're running or mobile is pathetic given what else we see, and there's no explanation for it. So here's the you thing, can't... even if they had the, those, um, that are old weapons that fire way slower, that would have been better. But the fact that they gave yes. them these, which it wouldn't have been good, but it would have been better. Now the fact that they gave them these fucking miniguns, just constantly rapid fire, it's insane, dude. I, uh... And that's 
that's the other big issue. Now, what helps this episode compared to, I don't know, a standard Dot 2 episode is that um, they do have an element of survival because it's a finite amount of time to survive. The problem then comes is they should die way sooner and not get the plan for they'll die anyway. And also you require Daleks to not even use basic strategy to go in front of the TARDIS when the loop starts and kill them free. Or even work out where their starting points are for all three, kill them. It's that simple. And Daleks would do this given they can work out com billion combinations in a single second according to Ninth Doctor. And the arguments I see for this is, one of them is they die anyway. And I'm like, look at how they die. Just because a person dies doesn't negate the other instance of plot armor anyway. But if they're dying point blank, standing there, or they do nothing and let it, that's not a valid instance because there is a situation where it's impossible for them to miss. Uh, therefore, they will always hit. That's not a fair example. A uh, fair example would be, let's say... Uh, one time they kill when running, another time they don't. We have to assess the differences between the two and whether they don't is valid enough to warrant not plot armor. That's how that works. Yeah, uh, and the other like, thing, the, the thing is, the considering who the Daleks are and what we know about the Daleks, I don't think there's any way you can justify like ninety nine percent of the uh, times when something like this happens. Um, like even if it's in other episodes where the Daleks have been uh, missing, it's just like. Well, wow, that is already contrived. And then this episode is like, oh, they have a fucking minigun and they're executioners. So uh, they're even uh, specially made to kill the doctor uh, and they can't fucking hit a target that is moving. It's and it's not even the worst is this, to be honest, is the worst plot I've ever seen in Doctor episode. But the worst is, is when you got all five of them kind of lined up, um, running in a corridor and not a single shot hits them. And it's the easiest target for a Dalek to shoot. That is their perfect environment. And it misses every single one of them somehow. And people are like, well, it's common in other things or it's in other episodes. I'm like, well, at what point does it become, okay, this is a bit of an issue here. They shouldn't be surviving. And I'm sorry, like, if you're going to rectify the Dan thing with it, it's a bit of fun. That's pathetic. Because fun is subjective. Fun of fun, you fun of fun. Mm -hmm. But you're basically going, Oh, it is plot armor, but because it was used for whimsical purposes, well, that's fine. And that's not the same as saying um, you do Daleks deliberately um, aiming badly for parody, because this is a parody. The comedy is meant to be. There's meant to be a, It's meant to be levity, not um, be a parody. So this whole plot armor debacle, I find. Um, the defense is retarded. I find people being bad faith and assuming the worst positions really bad. They're trying to act superior because they don't think plot armor is an issue. Um, and quite frankly, they need a reality check when their defenses are it's a bit of fun or it is common or assuming their standards because that's, that's literally being bad faith and toxic in of itself. And that's not even the biggest issue with this episode, to be honest. The bigger issues is that Daleks don't do obvious tactics, or there's inconsistencies with where they end up, or the Daleks don't shoot um, immediately when they normally would, or characters acting out of character, or a lack of depth in the conflict between characters. It's all these issues that are bigger, but plot arm is still substantial when it you need precise points for the characters to die to get to these moments. That was a really long rant. It was a really long rant. <laughs> Imagine they die like near the end there as they were taking all like the explosives and stuff. That would really have fucked up the plan, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Exactly. They would all die. The build would be destroyed and it would be a, a considerable tragedy. And the Doctor couldn't even regenerate. Yeah, because yeah. of the multiple shots and the fact that the building was exploding. <laughs> mm. And uh, it, it's frustrating because I look at this episode and I said on Twitter, I'm like, this could have been like one of the best Dalek stories you could have had because a concept where five people are trapped in a loop having to evade the smartest creature in the universe, all with uh, potential conflict points, it could have been a masterpiece. And I think under RTD, it would be because it the would character be, absolutely. Like it. Yeah. 
It's like, Those two characters would be great if it was written under RTD. Yeah, it's not even a biased point of view yeah. to RTD. Cause... He just knows how to write characters, and we've seen it throughout all of his shows and Doctor it... Who. He knows how to do it. Yeah, it's like, if you watch Midnight, which is literally characters being yeah. put in an extreme scenario trying to survive. Fantastic. Yeah, and it's like, you could make up these characters that I want that I think everything of Chibnall always is bad when I've literally said there's some good stuff in this. Like the there are good scenes, like very rarely, but there are like five in total probably, maybe a bit more, but there's, there's, it's not, not every single thing is bad. Hey, Village, yeah, of and... the, the Village of the Angels, I like that episode. I don't think it's bad. It's, it, I yeah. think it's one of the best ones. Yeah. And it's like, I'm not going to go everything Chibnall does is bad because I think... Quite mainly from a meta point of view, Chibnall's done good steps towards the show. Like the first female Doctor, I'm finally glad someone had uh, the courage to go ahead and do that, despite what discourse it may do. Um, the Phasmin stuff, it's it's groundbreaking to have. I, I don't even know if it's groundbreaking because Captain Jack, but to have a same sex companion full time traveling, be in love with the Doctor, that's quite an interesting thing. I don't think the Doctor should fall in love with a human companion. I wouldn't mind mm. if the Doctor was female and saw River and there was the same sex there. I think that's better writing-wise, but this is still a new step. Um, so I think he's done some good steps. The problem is his writing's awful. His character dialogue is often stiff um, or surface level. I don't think he understands how to explore intricacies of characters. His plots are disastrous. They're generally disastrous most of the time and forget basic details that were established in dedicated shots um his world building's atrocious like we still don't know whether the universe is actually destroyed or not i mean that is like, i think they think the universe wasn't destroyed because dan was like hey you saved the universe but like by every line of logic it wasn't saved <laughs> yeah it's like it's these these aren't even like small details where you're like which puts a certain writer above others. So RTD, I think, is above a lot of writers because of his very good with small details and throwaway lines. Yeah, yeah I really like the way him, they build up a lot of the the mysteries in the seasons. Like with uh, yes. Donna, with like there's something on your back or um, just seeing a role show up throughout the season. It's like those are small details that when you come to the end of the season, it's like it's really paid off. Or especially... um with uh saxon in season three i think that's the best yes. build to one because like they're constantly well, mentioning uh saxon right, throughout yeah. the season and then by the end they're like oh shit that's what that's why we've heard about saxon so much and it never feels like out of place to hear about him throughout the season and so i think it's like just like yeah he really knows how to build up these kinds of things uh subtly whereas with chibno he doesn't know how to establish details um subtly to get his plot moving forward nor nor does he know that he should be consistent with those details and then it causes a lot of the huge contradictions in his stories which really hurts the world building yeah i mean in this episode there was a few mysteries like what caused the time loop i got it as soon as they landed and then it revert back to them outside times so i was like well it's the tardis it's not gonna be a dialect <laughs> well the dialects need to do a time loop nothing else here could do a time loop and it's like this isn't a mystery chip no you've got a i don't think he could I'm not going to say that because I haven't seen Broad Church and that's got mystery to it, but I don't think he could do sci-fi mystery he at all. Um, and I don't know why. But compared to RTD, which had the four knocks, it's like, well, the four knocks is obviously going to be the master, but it's like, no, it's been willful along. Yeah, it's great. I, and love, I love that. I think, let's say if I could say Chibnall wrote a book about his time as Dot Two show and he explained his thought process. I think you'll be able to see the clear difference in the talent of the two writers. Because when I read RTD's book, I'm like, I understand this thought process. I know why he's doing this. And I know why this is good for the show. When I listen to Chibnall explain things, he often goes, I think, or I feel. He doesn't really explore why this is a virtuous or this is uh, probably the best choice he could have gone in. Which is why a lot of his scripts probably falter. <laughs> yeah. And it's... I think he's a lot like uh, Ryan Johnson in the way where he puts emotion over logic. And so he's just yes. like, I feel like this is the best choice. And then he just does it without thinking about like 
how it fits within the story itself. And I think he's too too eager to get to the end point and not do the hard work that goes into it. Because, like, for example, with Phasman here, we know obviously people have been pushing for this, and it's probably because of that. But if you're if you're going to tell me this was planned all along, I'd call bullshit because either there's been very very sparse hints, or there hasn't been any, and you can't really tell this is an ongoing arc. For Yaz, Yaz has had probably some of the most interesting concepts around suicide, around wanting to step up and do more, um, her love for the Doctor. These are really interesting concepts, but none of them are fleshed out. Say with Fry with they his don't dyspansia. blend together at all, at all yeah, really. they don't. It's like, as well with Rhyme's dyspraxia, I know Tin obviously has a hatred for that. I'm like, imagine if they tried to babyfy Ryan because of his dyspraxia, and he talks about proving, no, I don't need to be babyfy. Just I don't understand need to be on my struggle. Yeah. yeah, and it teaches you how to handle people with disabilities. It's like, so much there. And Chibnall never does it. He just mm-hmm. forgets about it and brings it up randomly. And it's annoying and it's annoying to be compared to a- nmds like as and erdronic because they are mm-hmm. nmds they've they're self-proclaimed who just are more focused on the political aspect rather than how can we bolster the writing it, I, I, no but jeb but jeb it's so clear though that you're a sexist like, <laughs> oh yeah like, i can just feel your sexism like oozing out of this discord call yeah, how dare I explain my perspective? Exactly. Um, you need to um, sit in your place and shut up. <laughs> like, all in all, I think this fandom, both sides really, uh, people in this fandom could be absolutely pathetic. I get yes, it worse. I get it worse for the positivity people uh, because I'm obviously more negative in this era. But I also think they're worse because they're not at all aware of their behaviours. They're very not self-aware. Uh, yeah, I think the idea is that just the they use positivity as a shield to be like, well, I'm, j- I'm just saying I like this. Or you, and you're being the mean Even one, saying I'm not allowed to like more it. more than that. Yeah, exactly. And it's just like, you can't... St- and then bad like, uh, and, the, and, the, and that's the thing us. that um, been, we've been criticizing a lot the past few days about, like, how people, like, you're allowed to like whatever you want, uh, but when you come out with arguments for, uh, for uh, this kind of stuff, we can counter them and it's not like we're not saying you're not allowed and we're not saying you're not allowed to like s- stuff we're just saying like what you like is flawed and whether you care about those flaws it's irrelevant to the point we're making fine. it's yeah. totally fine if you don't care exactly yeah i mean um season one of doctor who obviously i went through that i need to start season two episodes like uh boomtown or the long game or even the empty child because that is as high rated as people say it is. I love these episodes, but I can go, these are the flaws within them, like the empty, I think it's the empty child, where they got about the spread of the virus. If you do an R rate calculation, it should be across the entire country. So it's like flaws exist, just whether you care is complete down to you. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I I like a lot of uh, Series 7 episodes, and I know that series is shit. Yeah. It's fine. I, to put it this way, even Chibnall era, I like a lot of episodes because I'm superficially uh, really into these elements of Dot 2. I find Dot 2 my favorite show, so I'm very easy to please. But I can acknowledge these all have problems. I see a Dalek, and quite honestly, I'm like, oh, I like this, there's a Dalek. (laughs) I'm just going to criticize when I think the Dalek should be doing something that's established. Mm. It's just bizarre. And like, it annoys me because I know Editron and um, Connor gets it the most. It's this apparent bias towards RTD. And I know Terry's gets it. And it's like, well, no, because we've got to sit and consider the argument. RTD, like it or not, had delivered the strongest era of Doctor Who. Um, mm-hmm. It like, even from a meta level, diversified it. It got extremely good ratings. It brought it extremely good merchandise. Moffat's era made it more international, which it built on RTD. He established spin-offs, and the writing was generally really good. That's why he's back. Even the BBC acknowledged this. There's a and big t- reason why it's RTD coming back, and it's not a new showrunner. Mm-hmm. There's yeah. a big reason as to why. It's not a coincidence. 
Yeah, it's like RTD is a Dot 2 super fan who has the ability to write so creatively. Like his short with the Sarah Jane thing, um, obviously I don't know who's seen it here, uh, 10 minutes of that, quite honestly, is better than the entire Chibnall era. Yep. It is a masterpiece. Sarah Jane Adventures is a show that I think if you properly picked apart, would probably be like kind of average maybe. However, what it really excels at is its characters. Characters like Clay Langer are one of my favorite characters in the entirety of the Doctor universe because of how developed he is as a character throughout his entire run in the show. And the episode, The Curse of Clyde Langer, is one of my favorites because it really explores like who Clyde really is and his sort of reaction to like his situation. And I fucking love it because of the character, because the character writing for all the characters is, is sublime. So like, and, yeah. And to add as well to that, one thing about RTD versus Chibnall, and I don't, if someone actually tells me Chibnall's better as social commentator than RTD, I... That's just flat out. Mm, yeah. True. Like, RTD's social commentary, including in just children's Just go and shows, watch Turn Left, guys. It's more yeah. substantial and more substance than anything in the Chibnall era. Even even when you have uh, goofy monsters like Slavine, there's a social commentary in there, which is that politicians, uh, um, the stereotype of, I guess, fat, I don't know, fat, <laughs> silly, non-caring <laughs> beings that just, uh, um, what's the word? Um, begins with S. Uh, they just have no manners in there. They have no etique. They don't care. It's like there's a reason for why the Savina are like they are. But even in Sarah Jane Adventures, what makes that show stand out compared to other children's shows, it's not afraid to tell um, children of, I want to say 10, 10, 10 or 11 is probably the main audience, maybe 9. It's not afraid to discuss issues that they'll probably go through, like Clyde. The Berserker is an excellent episode that talks about what yep. it's like to not have a parent there and for it's them to suddenly right. come back. And it's like, no other. It, it I, tackles very heavy themes and it understands yeah. like the implications of everything and really executes it to like a really high degree, like very well. It's like, like even what's the episode? Uh, the day Sarah Jane Smith died or something. It tackles the whole theme yeah. of losing your best friend and confront, like accepting that death is a part of life. It teaches kids death is scary, but. It is a part of it, and live your life to the fullest. It recontextualized that episode. Recontextualized like Sarah Jane for the better. Yeah, it, it's like if you t- if you told people we're going to do a spin off of the most beloved Dot Two character, we're actually going to elevate this character and make her mainstream in the UK. She is mainstream. Um, people would say blasphemy. People generally would, but RTD could do that, and that's. Chibnall, I don't think can. I think that's perhaps it quite well. Torchwood, because Torchwood, I haven't seen um, all of it. I kind of lost interest in season one, but it never reached the heights of Sarah Jane. Part of it's due to its direction, but also I think the writing's probably weaker there, despite it later tackling really good issues. Like, I. I watched season one, and one of the episodes is literally where there's an alien that uses semen as energy to feed itself yeah. and the people die and I think to myself who thought of this idea who I don't I can't even believe I think it's bad enough RTD approved of the idea because he would have to but I want to know who thought of it and Chibnall would obviously approve of this idea and it's like whilst both are guilty I think it befalls more on Chibnall when you look at the difference between Sarah Jane and Torchwood and I think Sarah Jane had more attention to it than Torchwood ever did, because the writing seems to be much better. And I know RT, when RTD's evolved, he actually approves the scripts. He said so in this book, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, what was the episode where he looked at a snippet of a script and he approved it massively? I think it was Fires of Pompeii. I think so. Like, he made it more natural and yeah. showed... Uh, aspects of Donna's character and that's the point of writing dialogue uh, with character it's not there just to serve as funny one-liners or just to be there 
Each line of dialogue needs to have intent to either the world building, narrative progression, or character building. Ideally, you want to try and blend them together. And like when Donna asks questions about the TARDIS, it's like this is building more about our knowledge of how Child with the Doctor works, but also showing what Donna thinks of on her first landing when Rose gets emotional. It's building our um, in end of the world, building our development of Rose can't handle this. This would be a normal human reaction. And these these are clearly deliberate and not accidental. And that shows why his right is so much better. We've been at this for 10 minutes about how RTD is better than Chibnall. <laughs> oh, we could go on for hours, unironically. Yeah, and I, 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 don't, I want, don't want to say hope to come off me spirited, but when you see the right improvement because naturally there's going to be. I can't, there will see, be. I can't see RTD doing worse at this Chibnall album. It'd be shocking. Like, it'd be like, legitimately, oh, I'd be in awe if it was. Like, I'd, nah. I want the fans of Chibnall era that defend his right and say it's very good. That's fine if you think that I disagree, but anyway, I want you to compare it to RTD's writing for the 14th Doctor, especially if that 14th Doctor's female, because that allows for better comparisons. If that Doctor is female and you see how it's significantly better, you can understand where we're coming from when we say RTD's better. I'd say Moffat's definitely better as well. The issue with Moffat is either likes to complicate things too much and put too doesn't much. Doesn't really his... think things through. Yeah, he does. He likes to put too much on his plate, uh, or he has issues with understanding when he's going too far with certain jokes. Like the sex jokes are really off putting. So. That's why we cite RTD more than Moffat. But even Moffat in Sarah Jane Adventures, he did really good work there, like when Eleven met Joe and that scene with those two. We obviously know Moffat had a say in that. You could tell yeah. by the writing style. That is better than Eddie Chibnall's era scene. Yeah, that scene, oh, yeah, that scene in that episode point. is great. It's just... I don't know what more we can keep going at these people with why Chibnall error is flawed. Even Jay's video just gets digressed as five hours long. The reality is, to be honest, I think I could talk about 10 hours plus comparing I think you can. I think even Jay like, probably has said like he could, uh, she could do more, you know? There's more to oh, be discussed. Oh, yeah, she said she cut out uh, two chapters of her video, which would have made it yeah, like exactly. um, seven hours long, uh, simply because it was getting too long by that point. So, yeah. I mean, it's for the Chibnall error, there's so much you can talk about. And that, and also Jay didn't really cover the spin-offs like Sarah Jane and Torchwood, which admittedly Chibnall yeah. did. I don't know how good Torchwood is on the lane. I need to probably watch that. But even Class, that failed spin-off, um, that has better writing than the Chibnall era, especially with characters. I think Class gets a lot of flack and it's a bit underrated because it has some salvageable potential there. I, I did give up after three episode. and a half episodes. I so. watched one episode. I just generally didn't care about it. I watched all of it. I don't think it... It's probably sh- better than Children of Who, though. Um, it is. A show about um, Coal Hill School dealing with potential threats, I think that works very well as a concept, especially if you incorporate maybe characters from Sarah Jane helping out. I don't know. But I found that worked very well as a concept. Um, just they didn't get flashed out proper, unfortunately. But yeah, I think each time we watch a new episode, I'm like, this is the encapsulation of why Chibnall's bad every time. <laughs> yeah. Well, especially this... um, with Flux and then this episode, because like with Series 12, he he had a lot of other writers helping him and uh, you know, not every episode was written by him, but Flux was, every episode was written by him, except that uh, Village of the Angels had Maxine Otterton co-writing it. Uh, and so it's just like, it's really apparent of like, yeah, this this is what Chibnall writing is. It's like, because like, we have other scripts, so like, oh, he had to approve it, he had to, you know, uh, he still is the showrunner, so he would be to blame for these episodes being bad. But, you know, there are other writers, so it's not just like one homogenous, terrible thing. But with Series 13 especially, it's just like, man, 
this is the kind of thing you write, right? Like, this is your story. This is your vision for the show. And it's all always, every episode being the same fucking thing. And it's, uh, yeah, it's really fucking impressive how he can just continuously, continuously fuck up so much. And to top it off, remember RTD in his era and even Moffat, RTD wrote Midnight in a Weekend and he also has other commitments to Sarah Jade Adventures, uh, Torchwood. Chibnall just has this show, uh, which mm-hmm. is still a high mater's job, don't get me wrong, but compared to Magic spinoffs as well, it's like your writing should be better or on par here. And your writing is the worst of your own era. That's an embarrassment. That categorically is an embarrassment to your tenure. And it's why I hate when I see, because I did get excited when I saw the Sea Devils, but it's why I hate seeing them because I'm like... Remember, your... remember what I said on Twitter? Another another monster yeah. on the Chibnall uh, hit list. Yeah, I just know that that something's going to probably go wrong with them and I'm like I'm so glad you're bringing these villains back and say what you do uh, all these villains I'm so glad you're bringing back these concepts because you could do a lot with them but each time you just fail horrendously at Chibnall I think Chibnall's had some of the greatest ideas of New Who I generally stand firm on that with some of them time is short children no but I digress like um, like this episode, for example, I think these some of the greatest ideas. And each time he just executes them horribly. And I think Chibnall ultimately is just an ideas person. I don't think he can execute his own ideas. I agree with that. I think he has good. His stories have good potential, but they are not well fleshed out. Whereas RTD's a masterpiece. Like, generally, I want people to rewatch Midnight and then rewatch this, and you, you tell me that in any way on a similar level in writing. And before you go, oh, well, it's meant to be serious, it's meant to be a comedy, judge it from a com- comedic lens then. How, tell me how the jokes are structured, what are the punchlines, what does this tell you even about the characters that make these jokes? Is there a darker undertone to them? Because even sitcoms, basic sitcoms, they excel quite well. They will have darker undertones to their jokes that reveal more the character. Like The Office with Michael, he has a lot of jokes, but they often come from a dark place, and that tells you that this character doesn't like to be lonely because of the neglect they experience. And it gives a whole... It recontextualizes the entire joke, and you can analyze so much with it. I think that's way more interesting than Mr. Tardis going, plot armor is okay, Dan doing that was a bit of fun. I think there's so much more conversation if you delve into the talent writers have when they acknowledge these issues. I agree. (laughs) You said a lot. I feel sorry for Tin and Zod. Like, they have not... Tin has said, like, one sentence. <laughs> Zod has said nothing in about the last 20, I, 30 minutes. I imagine Zod <laughs> has just been having dinner in the meantime or some shit. It's just like, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 I just saw when... I'm just completely like, like my, my, ears, <laughs> my ears perked up. My ears perked up when you mentioned just back to the, the, back, back to the Ryan thing, which was 10 minutes ago. <laughs> I, I like... I like how... I, think, I like how, like, on the spot, off the cuff... I could say a lot more things about Doctor Who than I can when trying to write my scripts for <laughs> Doctor Who. Because I feel like the way I've articulated things explain my points, while it's not uh, the most concise or even clearest, I guess, uh, I still think if I put this in a video, it wouldn't be a bad video. Uh, like coming up with any of this on the fly, I'm quite surprised I could do this. I should do that for my videos. Do a rags to go off the cut. No, no, <laughs> don't, don't do rags. No, 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 we don't do that here. <laughs> bad episode. Very bad. Really I'd give bad. it. I'd give okay, it a yeah. one. I give it a one for destroying the Daleks. I think yeah. once. I think if you destroy the biggest threat in the show, well. What should be the biggest friend? And the rest of the episode happens. Mm. Yeah. I think... 
But on the on on the plus side, we've only got two more to deal with. Yeah. You remember that? Remember that? So actually, this is a perfect scene. You remember that Dalek that literally just teleported in, saw the doctor running, shot them instantly. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I get that's probably the only time a Dalek's actually bothered to shot the doctor, uh, which is still bad to say that. But that's what the execution of Dalek should be. They should see the doctor shoot. That's it. Yeah, yeah, it shouldn't be the uh, the way the the fact that he can just teleport why, why anywhere can't they inside just the building. Teleport into the room with the TARDIS. Yeah, that's exactly it. Like the fact that they can just teleport in this episode ruins everything. All they needed was to not establish that they can teleport. Ah, uh, fucking retarded ass episode. Um, but yeah, we've been talking for a while now. It has been one hour and forty minutes of this recording. So. Oh wow, it's a long boy. So yeah, yeah, and the episode is only like fifteen minutes, which which is good. It means that I can just I can um, I don't I won't have to edit all this conversation at the end. I just can just leave it. So that's good. But um, yeah, boy, yeah, been been fun. Except it hasn't because I hated that episode. Um, <laughs> yeah, we will be back whenever the next episode returns. Thankfully, that is a long ways away. So. Yeah, after I finish uh, editing the episode 6 one, which I should hopefully finish today, being the 4th of January, should be out, and then I'm going to start editing this one, and then we're going to have Flash reactions, uh, the five that we already have, but Flash is only coming back in March, so I don't know what other reactions might come in the meantime. Um, uh, Brit is going to be helping me out with editing a few of them, so that already uh, helps us out a lot, so expect those soon, and yeah... More live ecoms where we do st- stuff and talk about things. I don't know. I, I can't advertise ecom well. Um, so yeah, thanks everyone for watching. We it's, fuck Chibno. Uh, goodbye. Yes. Bye bye. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.